And this is a photo of Harvey during his service in Vietnam in 1963. Yes, yeah, so you can see <coughs> we're carrying M14s. <coughs> you know, they, we don't carry them anymore. So that's what we carried, <coughs> and uh, it was a great rifle. Uh, I'm on the, on the tarmac there at Da Nang Air Base, and Da Nang Air Base stored uh, Agent Orange and, and fuel there. And uh, the, uh, on my right shoulder is, is a short six-foot rope that we used to repel down. We tied it around our waist and hooked a D-ring on it, and the long rope is a repel rope that came out of the helicopters. Uh, we were assigned there with the uh, 3rd Marine Recon Battalion, uh, Charlie Company, uh, in 1963, and we weren't supposed to be there, combat troops. This was the first combat platoon in the South Vietnam, and I was the only Native American Indian, so I was the first Native American Indian Marine into South Vietnam in 1963. And I stayed there nine months, and uh, went in there weighing 188 pounds, came home weighing 149. Well, I, I, I really love seeing this photo of you during your service, too, and um, we'll talk a little bit more later about how, just how your service and how your experience has kind of shaped your interest in designing the memorial. Yes. Um, I want to take just a couple of minutes and um, provide a little background for everyone about the history of the memorial. So Congress directed the National Museum of the American Indian to create this memorial to, uh, to honor Native American veterans um, for their service and to raise public awareness of this long history of service. Um, Native Americans, including American Indians, Alaska Natives, Native Hawaiians, have participated in every major military conflict um, since the Revolutionary War, often serving in some of the highest numbers per capita of any population in the country, and uh, continue to serve in high numbers and with great distinction. But this history really isn't very widely known, and so Congress wanted for the National Museum of the American Indian to create this memorial to raise awareness of this history of service and to honor it too. Um, so when we began work on this project, we knew that we were gonna need to seek guidance from the people whom the memorial would honor. And so we began by forming an advisory committee of Native veterans and family and community members. We then spent uh, about a year and a half tra traveling across the country holding consultations um, to, to spread the word about the memorial, but also to get a better sense of what Native veterans and their families and communities wanted to see in the memorial, what kind of an experience it should be to visit the memorial. So the things that we heard in those consultations directly shaped what we um, shaped the design goals for the memorial, and what we wanted to accomplish with, with the memorial. Um, we then held a, an international juried competition and in 2018, Harvey's design was chosen. And this is, uh, on the left you see Harvey's initial sketch for the memorial, and on the right is the design that he submitted. And so his, his design was chosen from more than 100 and 120 entries because it really best accomplished the things that we'd been asked to do. We were told that um, the memorial needed to be inclusive of all Native veterans from all eras and all branches of service. It needed to acknowledge the sacrifice um, and support given by the families of those who served. It needed to um, it needed to embody Native spirituality in a very inclusive way again, and it needed to be a place of healing and remembrance. And Harvey's design just accomplished all of that so beautifully. So um, Harvey, I know that you participated in some of our consultations in Oklahoma, but you didn't initially think about submitting a design, right? But then you kind of were. Exactly, I thought. They've already picked somebody. Why are they going around there? I said, they already got this done. And so I was asked several times to submit a, submit a design <clears throat> by the Shine Arapaho tribes. And uh, I refused. I said, ah, oh, no, it's already done. And the second time they asked me, and I said, well, let me sleep on it. Let me dream about it. I, let me dream about it. And I said, no, I'll let you know. And so uh, I thought about it and uh, got up the morning and uh, sketched out what I thought it should be about. And, and, uh, my initial thoughts were, I want it to be a place that you have to go to to participate in something, not just to go and look at something and walk on by. I wanted you to be able to go there and pray for your relatives that are there, that have been there, that are going to be there. I wanted, I wanted to, to give the uh, elements there. And, I, and Native people are, are uh, very attuned to nature, you know. 
they're that's one of the things about them we're we're connected to everything we're connected to the air and the and the, the ground and the earth and the things that crawl across the earth and fly through the earth even the insects you know we're all connected and and i thought you know that's that's one of the things i've been taught what whatever we're connected to and and uh i wanted to to make that that way that people would go to a location i think thought about it i said as a cheyenne chief i go to a to a a teepee to do ceremonies and that we go to special places and and we go do a special place to do a sweat and and other Indians go to kivas and they go then your dance grounds are all round and and my grandfather used to say we're a, we're a people of the circle he said uh, we uh, you look at the the elements you look at the the seasons and you look at the life cycles and and things are eternal and it keep going around and around and I thought you know it's it's circles I need to put circles in here and and uh, we say that uh, the power comes from the directions and we're very concerned about directions and and so you know you call four directions and tribal people say there's six directions uh, up and down and some nations say there's seven directions and that's the ground that you stand on so you have to think about, I said, you know, I need to incorporate all those things, the sacred fire and, and the earth and the water and, uh, and air and, and uh, the ground. You know, we make ceremonies with the ground. We put things in the ground. Uh, we put prayers in the ground. We tie prayers in the, in the, in the trees and in the bushes. And I said, well, I put prayer cloths in there. So that, and that was my initial thoughts in, in a lance. And, and I didn't know that I couldn't talk about it to anybody. I remember. <laughs> so after I, after I did my initial sketch on this yellow tablet, my wife looked at it. My wife's Gina is a retired police officer. She looked at it. She said, Harvey, that's pretty good. You ought you to finish that up. So I, I gridded it out, did it on grid paper, and measured it. And, and you know, so uh, an and ar 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 archaeologist could look at it and put it together. And then my son, who is also an artist and a school teacher, and and he came in and he said, Dad, let, you need to get that animated. He said, let's animate. I said, oh, I don't want to get that. I don't pay somebody. I, I, I pay somebody. He said, don't worry. He said, I know some guys. And he took me to these animators uh, that had been doing some Disney stuff in Oklahoma and, and introduced me. And I showed him these drawings. And they turned those drawings to, into a photographs like they were already done. And that's what I carried up here to the, to the museum. And uh, on a Veterans Day in 2018, and uh, I thought I could just show them to people, and uh, I stopped it. I stopped the director, and I said, "Let me show you my drawings." And he said, "Well, yeah, come on." He took me down to the table down there in the atrium, and and uh, I started laying them out. And somebody grabbed me by the shoulder and said, "Stop! Don't do that." He said, "This is closed competition. Nobody's supposed to know." who you are and what you're drawing, and no tribes are supposed to be talked about. He said, if you show them these drawings, you're disqualified. And I thought, I didn't know that. I didn't read the, I didn't read the rules. <laughs> so anyway, so we didn't. And I put, them, put everything back in the tube and went home, and we had to put everything done electronically and submit everything uh, without a name or a tribal reference on it. So I thought it was... Uh, and there's a guy that saved my life. This just walked in, Walter Lamar. Walter's a retired uh, FBI agent, good friend of mine, known him for many years. Thank you, Walter. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting up here if I showed that, showed him my art. Right, yeah, and as you said, it, so this was an international competition. It was a blind competition. In the first round, the, the jury knew nothing about who had submitted the designs. They picked the, the strongest um, small group of designs to move to the next stage. And then this, this is what you submitted in the second stage after, you've had, after you'd had time to, you started by forming a team which included members of your family and butcher architects and urbanism. Um, you you kind of fleshed out your design, um, really further developed it, um, talked about how you would how you would build it, how you'd accomplish it, and then um, Harvey's design was chosen unanimously by the jury in the second round as the one that best accomplished what we'd been asked to do and what we then asked the designers to do. And it was interesting <clears throat> that uh, we had uh, on the grounds of this museum on the east side, we moved that design five times, five times we moved it. And well, actually, we moved it four times. The fifth time, uh, we moved it. Uh, there was about 40 of us there, and uh, 
And we were all standing there, and a hawk came flying out of the southwest skies and glided across the waterlands and landed right on that spot that we were looking at to choose. And it, and it danced around. It just hopped all around in that one spot. And I said, oh, look at him. He's dancing. And everybody said, that's a good omen. And then this hawk flew up into the, into the trees above the path of life. And he stayed there for over an hour with us. And it was just like, like he sat up in this, in this building waiting for everybody to leave. So he, uh, he stayed with us all this time. And I said, you know, <clears throat> Native people always consider our, our ancestors. We always think about our ancestors. And I said, that red-tailed hawk that came in here was uh, the name of my great-grandfather. He was a Cheyenne, a Frenchman, called, and his name was Red-tailed Hawk. And I said, that's my grandpa coming to approve of what we're doing. And I, to me, that was so moving. And then we find out that <clears throat> after that particular period, at different times, he still comes back, and he sits on the building, and he sits on the trees, and he brings another little red-tailed hawk with him. He brings another one with him. And my oldest brother who passed away, uh, Charlie's, his Indian name was Red-tailed Hawk. And I said, that's my grandpa and my brother coming to be here to approve of what we're doing. It was really powerful. And it was just, it was incredible too, because as you said, there was a whole group of us kind of tromping through the underbrush you know, looking at the side, and the hawk wasn't bothered at all, just stayed there long enough that we could go in and ask our photographer to come out and get a photograph of it. So it was, it was, it was really amazing and so moving when you shared the story afterwards, too, about the connection to your family. Yeah, and he, and he comes back at certain periods, on, you know, like when we, were, when we were putting the lances up, he showed up and stayed there and watched us do that. So to me, it was very emotional. Okay, and we've got a couple of photos taken by your wife, Gina, of uh, showing some of the fabrication of the, of the elements of the memorial. So you had the, the ring was um, fabricated at, I want to get the, the name right, um, Red, Redlands, at Redlands, Redlands Stainless Redlands. Steel. It was an Indian-owned company in Oklahoma City, and I had them do the, the sheet metal, the metal uh, circle uh, that, <clears throat> that they put together for us and... and Architects had a great deal to do with what, helping us out here and picking the types of metal. And you know, I didn't think about what type of metal to use, or whether it was stainless steel or brushed or or polished, or you know, and and what type of con concrete, what type of granite to use. I, those things never. I just said, well, we'll just do it, you know. And but they they the architects really defined a, a lot of our work and made it better without changing the concept. And <clears throat> so. This, this uh, Native American family uh, built this, this bronze and another company in Oklahoma City built the lances and another refinery in Oklahoma City did all the bronze work on the lance heads and the, the battle streamers and the eagle feathers. So we tried to, tried to, to bring as many people locally that we could. And it was Crucible Foundry that did the bronze work, right? Yes, the Crucible. They're, uh, they're a, a big uh, foundry in Norman, Oklahoma, and I've used them for several years. My brother used them for several years, and and uh, they uh, they they do excellent work. They did a life-size elephant herd. You know, can you imagine a life-size elephant herd that they did out of out of bronzes? And Harvey, I remember you said that um, when you submitted the design, you kind of thought. And once you were selected, you kind of thought that was the end of your part in this process, right? <laughs> but, yeah, I thought I was done. They said. Uh, they said, uh, Harvey, we got, uh, we've made a decision and we've got some good news and some bad news. And I said, well, give me the good news first. He said, the good news is you won and the bad news is now you got to do it. And I thought, I thought I was through. I let somebody else take over and do this. All I had to do was give you the idea. But he said, no, you got to be there. You got to prove everything that's done. We don't, want, we don't want someone changing your concept. You have to be there. So Gene and I, for the next three years, were here anywhere from five days to ten days every month, yeah. watching everything being done and going to all these committee hearings that we had to get approval from from the various agencies around Washington D.C. And uh, uh, an example was uh, the fire. You know, I thought we could light the fire, an eternal fire, in in the, the base of the ring, and they said, no, you can't do that because of the the, the laws uh, and the rules on, on fire and 
where people could have access to. So we only light it when we when it's necessary when you have a special program. So that that probably was the only thing that was disappointing to me was that that the fire wasn't burning all the time. But uh, I could understand that somebody would be out there roasting weenies. Yeah, and so so we do. Um, we are able to light it for for you know for special ceremonial occasions, including this afternoon. Um, following this talk, um, there will be a ceremony to light the to light the flame and a presentation of colors by the Kiowa Black Legging Society. So it'll be a, a beautiful ceremony. Yes, and I, we, Jean and I love coming back uh, at different uh, seasons to see see it in the different seasons. You know, uh, we've seen it in the rain and uh, in the cold weather. Uh, when the snow hits, we'll, we'll come back again and look at it again. So we'll, we love coming up here and, and watching people come in here and hearing their comments and, and uh, about what they feel. And I've always felt that <clears throat> the, the museum is doing what it, the, the museum and the memorial is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to help people heal, give them some strength, and uh, help them to recuperate and, and to pray for their loved ones in the past, the present, and the future. And uh, to me, that... Uh, that is what is going on. I come in here and see the Hawaiians in here, and they're hanging their lays on the, on those uh, lances, tying them to the lances, and people coming in and tying medicine bags to the lances and ribbons, uh, ribbons to the to the lances. And those are prayer cloths. Well, not all tribes use prayer cloths, but some of the Plains tribes do. They they tie something in into the a tree or a bush, uh, a bag, a medicine bag, or a, a piece of cloth with something in it, and maybe a flesh offering. You know, and they tied in there and uh, and ask the Creator to give us give us a, a, a blessing, and so that's what I included that on the lances, where people can come in there, say a prayer into that cloth, tie it on that lance, and every time the wind blows, that prayer goes out. And uh, if you go out there and look, you see those lances are just covered in in prayer cloths and 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 lays and and different uh, items tied on there. People even tied their wedding rings on there, their their rings and things on there. So it's, uh, it's becoming a special place. I think it's a place that you will, uh, can benefit from when you don't feel good or you feel like you need to, to communicate with someone or pray for somebody, that the place to go sit down is sit in there quietly. And, and uh, what's amazing to me is that uh, you're in the heart of Washington, D.C., and you crawl, in that, you crawl in that area of harmony, and it just gets quiet, peaceful. And people will sit there for hours, you know, and you, and even non-native will we'll go in there and just sit for hours. And I loved I love coming there when the natives are, are tying prayer cloths and they and they're hearing that drum music and they're dancing around that ring. They're and they're dancing or doing a little ceremony or putting a, a, a an object in the ground or smoking something off. Yeah, it's, it, those are what those what makes things powerful. You know, you have a special place where you like to go to. You know, in your life, maybe it's maybe a little certain spot somewhere on on the river or down the road or somewhere on your property, and and there's something something special that you feel special at that area, and that's that's the way I I feel about certain places on our property that uh, we can go there and and just feel like a blessing's coming to you, and and something happened in the past, someone years ago did something there at that spot and made it special, made it a blessing. And you're starting to receive from that. And that's what I wanted from this memorial. I wanted the people to come there and pray and sing and make blessings and make promises and that other people will come there and they'll feel those same things. They'll feel, feel those same things about how they feel and, and uh, that they, they'll feel serenity. They'll feel peaceful and uh, they can go home that way. You know, that's, uh, they burn a little incense, burn some cedar, burn some sweet grass and and all those things and, and, and the prayers that go out, that's what, I, that's what I wanted to happen. And I go there now and I see that. It's a blessing. Yeah, and Harvey, you're answering most of the questions that I have. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have. No, it's okay. It's great. Um, and I, I just wanted to say, um, kind of along the lines of what you were talking about earlier, you know, you've got this nice winding path that take, takes people through the landscape as they're approaching the memorial. They kind of have a chance to um, prepare themselves first. And y you kind of feel yourself being removed from, you know, the hustle and bustle of the city and walking into this really special place that's sheltered by, um, sheltered well, by the trees. Oh, mm-hmm. If you'll notice that that path, <clears throat> it, it's curved. And some tribes call that the red road. Uh, 
And we changed it to the path of life because a lot of some of the other nations don't have a red road. So we call it the path of life. And it's and it's and it swings through there like that because in your life you have ups and downs, you know? You you fall out of grace, you come into grace, you fall out of grace, and and uh that we call it that it's really a the path towards harmony. And once you get to that memorial and you step inside, you're in a you're in harmony with the elements, with the directions, with the cardinal points, with the sacred colors, with eagle feathers, with the waters, uh, all those things you're in harmony with. And, and you should be at peace once you make that path of life. And that's why I did not want it to be a pathway all the way through. It has to be a destination. I said it has to be a place that you want to go to. It has to be a place that Native Americans a long time ago said, I have to go over there to do something. I have to go to that kiva. I have to go to that uh, Hogan. I, it, I have to go someplace to do this ceremony. And it, it wasn't, it's not someplace that you're going to just walk by going to someplace else. You have to want to go here. One way in and one way out. Yeah, I think that was really important that it be, it's really a destination. It's a place that people want to come and together and, and not just kind of happen past. And, yeah. Yeah. And so you really created this. Um, so, so we see a, a lot of circles in the shape and you, or in the, in the design of the memorial. And you mentioned this before. And it's really a very welcoming, um, kind of enveloping place, a so, you know, place for people to come gather and to, um, to wait, can you talk a little bit about um, kind of the symbolism of the circle and why it's important in I the can. design? I can. Uh, you see an outer circle uh, that runs into the, fin into the fence. You see an outer circle. And that allows natives. Let me say something. Uh, the purpose of this na National Native American design was that was made for Indians. Indians will recognize those things. But we, we accept and, and invite any veterans or any veteran family to come in here. But it was designed for Indians, you know, that Indians will understand. So you see the outer circle. A lot of tribes, uh, when they go to a, to a, a ceremony, uh, they will enter it from a certain direction, and they will leave from a certain direction. So I, we have four different entryways, which, which reflect the directions, north, south, east, and west. And so the tribe can enter the, where, they, where they tribally enter, from the north, the south, and, and they can go into the inside. And the, uh, the inside, as you get inside, we, I call that harmony, where you're in touch with all the elements, with all the directions. And the centerpiece is, I call it the drum. The drum, it's a, it's a stylized drum. And you'll see my first design, I made it look like a drum. We changed it to a stylized drum uh, with a stainless steel vertical s s ring. And that ring is based sitting on that drum. And that drum uh, has about three or four inches of water in it. And, uh, that water is controlled by two different types of pumps. One that controls the volume and one that makes it pulsate. And as it pulsates, that's the sound of the drum and the rhythm going out across the land. And as, as that, you'll see those little marks there, that's the rhythm that is going out, created by this mystical drum. And, and it sends that, that drum beat out and it goes down the path and it goes across the mall and across the the grounds all the way to the west coast, calling people, veterans, to this memorial. You know, and when you go to an Indian country and you go to a ceremony, you first thing you hear is the drum start. And that's saying, come on, we're getting ready to get started. Get your clothes on, get your son, get things ready. And that's what, so that's what I reflected on. I wanted a rhythm to come, to call the people out. So that stylized drum with water in it. Water is purification. Nothing grows without water. Nothing grows without water. So we, uh, we did that, and, and uh, the fence, the railing in the fence has the same rhythm to it. It has the same rhythm. Of, it breaks itself. Gets, it's tight, and then it gets a little looser as it goes out. And, and, and that also guides, guides you in and, and causes a rhythm of everything. So to me, uh, the drum beat is a rhythm, the heartbeat of, of, uh, our, of our people. And that's what we, so we wanted that to expand out across the land. And, so the, the lances, you see these lances here, uh, they are uh, they're bronze lances. They're, they've been acidized. And uh, 
what they're what they're tied to, you'll see the tail of it over here on this one on the right. We call it a battle pennant, you know, battle stripe. Battle military people have their battle pennants, and Indians had their battle pennants, and this is what what this is represents a battle pennant, and we tied those eagle feathers to it. Eagle feathers are the rewards that people. Uh, native people make and and uh, create and and uh, I can't I can't do something and go tell you that I did it I have to have someone that was there saw me do something and then they tell the story so a lot of times it's difficult for uh, Indian people to to tell you a story because they're not supposed to do that in generally there's someone else that's supposed to talk for them so that's what that's what a, a lot of people uh, will have to talk for you I get I get confronted with that a lot I you know, they asked me, uh, how come I didn't do something? I said, well, I'm really not supposed to do that. Someone else is supposed to do that. Someone else is supposed to speak about that. So these are bronze feathers. They're bronze feathers on a battle pennant and uh, with a battle lance and, and a lance head. And those, uh, those lance heads are about 24 inches long. That, that, that lance weighs almost 400 pounds. 400 pounds that the architects helped design and put it together. Uh, and uh, so it took a while to to put those in those back of those walls of, the, of that uh, inner circle. And then you see the, the, the rings that we put on it so that people could tie their blessings and their prayers on there and their prayer cloths and, and just different items. And uh, so you have a, you had one, one, uh, Lance has had the white battle ribbon on it, and then red, and then yellow, and then black. And uh, those were the sacred colors that we used during this proceeds. And that's a, that, that centerpiece is a piece that they use in ceremonies, uh, that uh, if they have a ceremonies, they paint them, and, and they'll tie things in those ceremonies and, and post them. And so we had, that was posted in, at the museum. And, they uh, let it sit there for about several weeks and finally decided they better bring it in before someone takes it. So, but uh, you'll see the little feathers tied in there and, and uh, on, the, on the right and the ribbons. And, and they, whenever they tie something on there, when it gets real full, the, the staff will come out and, and remove those items. They'll remove them and uh, dispose of them in a properly way. Sometimes they may burn them and they may go bury them return them back to the earth. One of the elements was, uh, was the fire. And uh, there are, you'll see the lights in the, in the water there. And some of the things that, that we discovered that we didn't really intend to do was uh, you put it at a certain depth and that light comes through that water and you could put your hand out over that light and it, the flame would dance in your hand. It looked like your hand was, had burst into flames. And... And that, uh, to me, that was that was just another gift that that the Creator gave us, to, to something special that we didn't plan on. And uh, the water uh, is not very deep. Uh, they they was afraid that if I made it too deep, people would be bathing in it. So we we made it pretty shallow. But it, but it works. It works. It uh, you'll notice that uh, on the that drum uh, there's a uh, lance points on it you'll look at them when you go out there you'll see they're pointed down no these are pointed up on the drum they're lance points all the way around it pointed up on the back of the wall of those back there they're pointed down and that's reflective of we're still here we're still here we're, we put our spear in the ground and we're still here and so there's just a couple of little things that that we uh that we did that to me that were were special and and not everybody recognizes but uh you know, even the type of granite that we had to use. I just thought we just use some granite. And I said, well, no, we had to use special granite, special places. Where did it come from? And, and uh, the, uh, the type of water, did they want water to come from, from the, the wetlands? Or did, you know, we had to put, well, we, we used water from, but it's blessed water. They bless it. I come, we come and bless it. I bless it every time I come here. I bless the water. So that you can use some blessed water. And the other, other tribes will do the same thing. And the benches on the inside are half a bench. There's only a half a bench uh, around there, and that's because we want people in wheelchairs to come in and back up in there and have some place to, to put themselves, be, you know, so they're not, they're not in the way, they're not in, inhibiting somebody, but they're, they're sitting there 
uh, in their wheelchair or if they're uh, uh, incapacitated or have some. I even put a bench on the on the path of life by the by the uh, armed services seals. So and I and I learned that from a couple of Cheyenne guys that were at at uh, Desert Storm and and uh, when they were burning all the oil wells, they had respiratory problems and he said that that says has, has hurt a lot of a lot of men respiratory problems from that oil and burning and and so I, we wanted to put a little bench there so they could walk part way and sit down and rest and then come on into the into the into harmony so it's uh, it's truly been a blessing for us all and you talked about wanting to include the four elements uh, and you've just talked about um the flame and the water you also talked about wanting to uh, include air and the earth in the in the design yes i did i wanted that in. and this this vertical circle uh besides reminding us of, of the the everything is in existence and that it's ongoing and uh it's also the hole in the sky where the creator lives and that's what we always we refer to that that uh, the hole in the sky where the creator lives and that's why we use eagle feathers because the eagle feather eagle can fly through that and so we ask the eagle to to carry our prayers we send our prayers to the creator and he flies up to his high because he flies the highest and he gets up there and he, he delivers our press our messages and and the creator gives him his blessings back and he comes back to, and brings our blessings back and so that is actually the hole in the sky that that we refer to uh, and that's that inner circle so you there say your prayers go through there and it, and the blessings come back through there and uh the water uh, on the outside and and uh, the water inside and the air and the earth we have a lot of ceremonies that that uh you uh, put blessings in the earth. You f you feed the earth. You feed the spirits. You know. You give them something uh, sweet, bread, meat, uh, coffee, and tobacco, and you put it in the earth. And so th th they can do that. We can feed those spirits uh, right here because you can touch the earth. And another thing, we've got a speed system. And and I'm on. I'm with the understanding that. This is the only memorial that has a speaker system on the mall. And what you have is, when you walk around, you have four speakers, and you hear a tribal flag song. All tribes have a, have a song about the American flag. Almost all tribes do. They sing the American song. All tribes have songs about their veterans. They sing a veteran song. And then they sing an honor song. For the for the for the honors and and what what men have to give up and give up their things maybe their lives or their someone else and so we honor those people that do those things and we play that constantly here those songs are played constantly here and a, a specific tribe could say I want I'm we're from so and so and we have those songs can I send them to you and if we come on January the twentieth could we hear our own songs you could. You could, you could, you could probably hear your own songs, but for the most part, they're they're played in general, and and uh, that's to honor our veterans. That's to honor our veterans and and the families. The families are so important to veterans. Uh, when I came home, am I going in the right direction? Okay. <laughs> when I came home from Vietnam, we have a ceremony among among uh, Cheyenne Rappos, and they uh, they they uh, they meet you, and they bless you uh, because. That refers back to the old days. In the old days, when uh, war parties went out and they, they fought and did the things, and, and before they could come into the camp, they were stopped. And they stayed outside the camp range, and they uh, howled like wolves. Let the, let the people know that they were coming back. They howled like wolves. And the medicine men would go out there and bless them and pray for them and do ceremonies on them because they didn't want them coming into the camp with that mindset of, of war. They didn't, see, they were studying PTSD long before we talked about it. I never heard of PTSD, but a lot, but I've tried to think about them. Old time Indians were doing it already. They didn't want that man coming in at the camp and uh, what they said, where the humans are. They didn't want you coming into the camp with your bad attitude, your fighting attitude. So they stopped you out there and prayed for you. Then you could come in and walk among the humans again. And so, that's that's uh, what what we do now. We do that. They have these ceremonies for for people, and they bless you. And uh, my family has a big giveaway. They give away 
what whatever they've got of value, they give it away, and uh, to the various tribal members and people. And and uh, I think that's what uh, what uh, what helped me the most. And uh, I think another thing that helped me the most was when uh, I came out out of the Marine Corps. Within six months, I was a police officer. So I went from one brotherhood to another brotherhood. And some people don't have that, don't get to do that. There's that gap before they finally get discovered by somebody, if the American Legion or the Veterans Foreign Wars will come in and help them. And, but, so I didn't, I didn't suffer the way a lot of guys do, you know? And, you know, one of the things that we heard in our consultations um, that was really important to people was that this be a place of healing, that it be a place of, you know, calm and reflection, spirituality and healing. And I think your design really, I mean, it, it, it really um, welcomes people in and it's, it's really meant to be that, a place of, of calm and reflection and healing. I hear that a lot. I, I've, I have people sending me photographs almost daily uh, to come in here and, and take a photograph of it. And uh, friends of mine and people that I don't even know, they'll send me photographs of coming in here and making those kind of comments. So it's doing what I hope it would, I was hoped it would do. It would give you some healing and give you some, some uh, comfort and, and would uh, comfort your family. And if my great grandfather walked in there, he would recognize all of those things. And, and, and veterans of this day walk in there and they look at it, they'll recognize all that symbolism. And my grandchildren will recognize them and their grandchildren will recognize all of these symbols. So this memorial was not done for just one era. It was done for a whole group, the whole time from the past, present, and future that they'll all have, they'll all recognize those things and it'll be a blessing to all of them. Not just, not just one era, but for all eras. Yeah, and you know, I think um, one of the other things that was so challenging about um, trying to build this memorial that would honor so many people from so many different backgrounds, you know, the, the challenge of trying to um, to make it truly inclusive, and so your design really um, has elements that that will speak to people from so many different so many different cultural backgrounds, you know, so many different Native traditions, and besides all of the the federally recognized tribes, the state recognized tribes, there's also um, it needs to honor and be meaningful to Alaska Native and Native Hawaiian veterans, and you really um, have created such an inclusive memorial and such a welcoming space. Well, thank you, and I, uh, I think that, uh, that there's something there for almost every tribe, and I think that's what, what, is, what, what has mattered and what helped is it wasn't just done for one specific tribe or group of tribes, that it, that it touches everybody. So I've had them all, I've had all different tribes tell me how much that it, it meant to them that they could understand it. I even had people from the European countries uh, and from Iceland, when, I, when they hear some of those things, they said, you know what, we kind of do that. We kind of do some of those things. So it's, it's, not, it's not as uh, totally private and exclusive because other people from other countries, they say, you know, well, we kind of do that. Maybe not quite like that, but we kind of do that. And so I think that uh, it, it really touches a lot of other people. Uh, I've had I've had people from the Netherlands tell me that they're doing some they're, they're in the process of doing some designs and they wanted to use our concepts our ideas in Europe so I think great that's a great blessing I think it's, it's great for people to to uh, to think about those things rather than just walking up and looking at a statue you know you can become a part of something you can do something there you can leave a prayer So, um, so the memorial was was completed and open to the public in uh, November of 2020, and then we we had to wait a couple of years to be able to have the in-person dedication. And so, last year on Veterans Day, we uh, were finally able to to dedicate the memorial with this incredible um, vet, uh, procession of Native veterans. We had over 1,500 veterans um, from over 120 tribes who processed on the National Mall, and then we had a beautiful dedication ceremony. And so, I wanted to ask what that experience was like for you what that day was like you know it was I was so proud I was proud not only for myself but for all of these people that came and, and uh, wanted to be a part of this you know they wanted to they wanted to be a part of it 
uh, in the culture, I said, it's always, we always like to be first. <laughs> you want to be the first to do something, first to touch your enemy, you know, first to, first to take a horse, first guy to go somewhere. First. And, and so people come for a lot of different reasons, but, but they come for a blessing. They come for the blessing and for the, for the idea that we're honoring their veterans, you know, that we're honoring their veterans. And I loved it when we were in a procession. Uh, as you start dancing and walking around, you could hear these different groups in their war hoops and they're hollering. I love that. That, yeah, you can see that, and uh, and and people uh, carrying uh, their 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 items of to be blessed and to to bring into into the the circle, and, uh, and the little kids they brought their children, and yeah, it was just a, it was a great gathering. It it just kind of reminded you like you're going to a powwow, you know, uh, with the veterans and the dancers and the families and and the children. Yeah, it was it was. And they all their. Uh, some, something that would ref, reflective of, of who they were and, and their nation. It, it was really a beautiful day, and just it was wonderful to see how many people came from, you know, from so many different communities, how many, um, you know, as, as we were holding our consultations, traveling around, we'd hear from communities that they were organizing buses or honor flights or other ways of bringing their veterans here to be, to be here for that special day. And it gave us a light rain. I said, you know what, this light rain is a blessing. It's washing the earth. It's going to going to nurture the plants I said it's a we got a little rain on this day it's a blessing and then we got a big rainbow a great big rainbow we did it was it was a beautiful day yeah it was yeah and so um I wanted to ask too what are some of the things that you've heard over the past year from people who visited the memorial I know a lot of people have been getting in touch with you after there and telling you about their experience here what are some of the kinds of things you've heard I, I've heard stories of how, how peaceful it was and how, how it made them feel good and that they felt like uh, when they, they left a burden there after they, something for some reason, maybe a, a prayer, uh, a prayer for, that for somebody and they were worried about somebody and so they left that worry there and it was tranquil. They said, you, I can't believe that you're, you're in the heart of, of Washington, D.C. and it's so peaceful in there that people will come in there and sit for hours. I, Gene and I have gone in there at night, and there, there may be a half a dozen or more, even non-natives, just sitting in there, just saying, well, I just, it's, we came it because it's so peaceful here. It's quiet. We love it. And uh, I think that that's, that's, that's kind of what, what we wanted to happen, was that uh, people would uh, feel good. They'd feel blessed. They uh, uh, can leave a worry there. They can tie that prayer cloth, they can leave a, leave a gift there in the ground on the water and uh, pray for one of their relatives, you know, pray for their family, you know. And uh, I think that's, to me, that's, and I see that happening. I, I see people calling me and, you know, say, you know, I, I left a prayer cloth, you know, I, I did, I, I, I danced there, you know, I left a gift in the earth, you know, whether, whether it be a, a flesh offering or just a, a gift of, of something, you know, that they, they leave and, uh, all those things to me makes it powerful. <clears throat> makes it powerful. It's going to be a help to somebody. I don't care what your anguish, your pain is, whether it's physical or mental. Uh, I think it, I think enough people have come there to do things that will, that are making it a powerful place. Yeah, and I think, um, and we've touched on this a little bit, but but I think that you talked about wanting this to be a place. For you know whether whether it's for a family uh, coming to remember a loved one who served, whether it's a veteran who served decades ago coming to remember their own service and people they served with, or whether it's even you know a young service member just returning home for their, from their service, it's really a place for you know coming and reflecting and remembering. Yeah, I think, and that's why why we wanted to put the drum in to call those people that 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 are hurting. If they're in, you know, if they're hurting, if they have some PTSD or something wrong with them, come here, come here and get get blessed. You know, come here and get blessed and, and make that sacrifice, that travel, you know. Uh, creator sees those things, you know, when you make a sacrifice. Creator sees those things and, and will often bless you for, for you making a sacrifice. And you come here and do that. And um, I think that's uh, I think that's happening. I'm hearing people say that, and that's what we really wanted it to happen. I said, that was my biggest, one of my biggest worries was that, that we would build this and, and some people would say, that it, it's not working. You know, you went totally in a different direction. You know, we wanted to see a statue or something else. And I said, you know, no, historically, 
uh, traditionally it's a it's a place to go to it's a it's a healing place and that's that's a, that's what it's all about taking care of one another and that's what i wanted to do And so then here are a few photos of, of that day, of the of the um, dedication ceremony following the procession. We um, have photos of some of the advisory committee members who were um, within the circle with you and the museum's director as the, as the flame was lit. And then in the center, um, there's a photo of you and Gina together. Um, I wanted to ask too, so over the past year, really over the past few years, but especially over the past year, I think um, you've been invited to to speak to a lot of groups about the memorial too. And, you know, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that, what that experience has been like, and if there are any stories that you especially would like to share. Well, that is another big surprise. You know, uh, I'm, I'm really not a public speaker. You know, I'm, I, uh, I was a supervisor in law enforcement for years, and so I did some things, you know, concerning budget and equipment and things like that, but I never considered myself someone that would go to uh, Albuquerque or Denver and give a talk to a bunch of people about about uh, about uh, the memorial and and uh, then go to, I went to Florida and visited with 900 Vietnam veterans, 900 Vietnam veterans. Average age was 76, and uh, a lot of guys would, had missing body parts and were in wheelchairs and electric chairs and running around, and they were having a good time, and I, I just, I was just, uh, I felt proud. I said, I love you guys. You know, because you, you, I've lost a lot of friends. Kids that I grew up with never came back. Five hundred eighty thousand casualties. You know, the, uh, Southern Cheyenne Arapahoes sent five hundred five hundred young men and women into Vietnam. Not one fatality. Not one fatality among the five hundred and some odd Cheyennes and Arapahoes that went. A lot of wounded, but no fatalities. And they said, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty unusual. But that tribal people say, well, we, we prayed for those things. We, we made sacrifices. We, we did things to, that uh, we would bring our children home. And so I thought, well, you know, whatever works, man. <laughs> whatever works, bring them home. And uh, so, but I think I'd, I'd visited with uh, a... Uh, army colonel female and I heard her story here and she was in Afghanistan and she said uh, they noticed her that she was different her skin was colored different and they said uh, uh, who are you what what are you where are you from and she said uh, well I'm an Indian she oh they said you're from India she said no I'm an American Indian they said no they killed all of you guys they killed all of you guys So you think what some people think happened in this country, you know, perceptions of what that they killed all the Indians, but they didn't. We're still here. We're still here. And uh, so I, I think that uh, different stories that people tell about uh, how they feel about certain things and what they've done. Are, are important for us to hear. That's why we're here today. You know, we want to share some things with you and tell you how we are. And we welcome you to our to our memorial. We welcome you there. Uh, your family, your the family of veterans, non-Native Americans, your families, come there. Come there and, and receive a blessing. You know, and uh, walk away with a with a, a better feeling, a better feeling about what's going on with your life. And pray it away. Pray away those bad things. You know, it's it's like like. Uh, like gifts, sometimes people will give you a gift, and and I'm a I'm a pack rat. I I buy I uh, I go to junk stores and I bring stuff home, and but uh, you don't know where that's been. You don't know what's what's been around that thing. So we have a ceremony. I'm going to share this with you because I want you to I want you to benefit from it. When you pick something up or you find something and you're not sure where it came from, 
or you get some money that you're not sure where it came from, you put it on the ground and you brush it off. We call it brushing off. Stroke it in one direction, stroke it in another direction, and say a little prayer. Say, I'm, I'm releasing you from your past life and bring you to a new life with me. So whatever that has been around stays where it was, and it's on the ground, and you take this new thing into your home. So you don't bring anything negative into your home. And so there's little things like that to me that are so important, little rituals, little, little ceremonies that you have, and I'm, I'm glad that we still have those, those kind of things, you know, those little ceremonies that... Uh, that we can, and I'll share that that one with you, that, uh, you know, a lot of negative stuff in this world, and uh, put it on the ground, say a little prayer, I'll leave you, I'll leave your past with you, in the past, and I'm bringing you home with me to live with me again, starting over. So, it works. When I, re I remember, um, I, I appreciate you sharing um, the story that you did just a moment ago, too. I remember when the woman shared her story at one of our consultations, and that story and so many of the stories that we heard really just um, brought home to us the, you know, the responsibility, the deep responsibility that we had to, to make sure that this um, memorial was done in the right way and yeah. re really told us how, how important this was. You know, she said, this memorial is going to be that this is why this memorial is so important because it's going to be demonstrating to people that we're still here and demonstrating the, the our dedication and our sacrifice and service to this country, which you know so many people just aren't aware of. And I, I think that um, in a similar way to um, the way that the the consultations brought home the responsibility to us, I feel like all of the conversations you've had with people since you know since this project began have been maybe an unexpected part of the process for you, something you couldn't have anticipated that you'd be traveling across the country speaking with so many people and connecting with so many people? You know, I, we have a, we had a great team that came here, and I, I there were so many things that happened that I just thought, I, I never thought of that. I never thought about that, you know, that architectural teams that came in to help us with the plants and with the, the granite and with the, the steel and, and you know, one, one group said, uh, well, Jet Big Circle, it, you'd need to make that out of buffalo hide and, and branches. And I said, well, it wouldn't last very long. It wouldn't last. We've got to make it last a while. You know, you'd have somebody building one every every two months to c call it in there. I said, uh, we'll do it out of stainless steel. You know, do it out of stainless steel. So it's it. Uh, and so these different architects that came in, the design architects from Oklahoma uh, was a, a team that we brought from Oklahoma. And they were the... Hans and Tory Bootsers, and they did the Murrah Building Memorial. They they designed the Murrah Building Memorial, where they blew up the the federal building in Oklahoma City and killed a bunch of people there. So they came and helped us uh, with the design, and then the local architects helped us with the the plants and and the, the granite and the and the mortar and just and the different colors and the texture. You know, I never thought about the texture of, of granite. They, you know, said so we do have certain textures and we want to want to that that all enhances the memorial if we do it with the right textures. You know, so we use textures and and the right colored stones and the right color of stainless steel. I, you know, they talked about the stainless steel and I said, well, just stainless steel. Well, do you want do you want polished stainless steel or do you want brushed stainless steel? I don't know who thought. I wouldn't think about two different types of stainless steel. So, but architects thought about all those things, and we just had a great accumulation of of de 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 dedicated people, just really dedicated people that helped us make this this uh, come alive, come alive. And it's all donated money. That's right. Um, so all of the um, all of the funds for the memorial, none of them came the, from the federal government. They all needed to be raised, and we had so many, um, in particular, so many tribal communities who gave so much to, to make this memorial possible. And it was really just an incredible um, demonstration. It um, was. I was I was surprised that uh, the Cheyenne Rappos gave a million dollars. I thought, oh man, those people are going to give me a hard time for for <laughs> spending. <laughs> those Indians are going to give me give me help because for spending that tribal money but it's been great everybody's been great i have not i have not heard one bad thing from my tribal people about this memorial wow. and they're pretty picky about doing <laughs> stuff and their money i think that we're coming to the end of our hour here um i wanted to 
close by just showing a few photos of the memorial at different times of year because it's really, I think, incredible to see how the memorial within its setting changes from season to season. See, we architects even brought in those big stones on the bottom, and then they, they built a, a cage underneath to keep the rodents from coming in there. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of little things that we never thought about, and the, and the wiring mm -hmm. and, and the speaker systems, how they put that up, and uh, they even drained all that water out of there. They drained all that water out of there so we could get get started. And so here's the memorial in fall, which is about where we are right now. Well, there are a few more leaves on the trees. Yeah, it has many faces. It does. It has many faces. And then here's the memorial in winter, and you were saying that you want to come back and see it when it's got when it's covered with snow like this. Yeah. Well, Harvey, thank you again so much for taking this time, you know, spending this time with me. It's always just so wonderful to have a chance to talk with you. Thank you all for coming, and I hope that you'll all yes, stay. Yes, thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you.